fifty dollars, your nonprofit fifty dollars, if not fifty dollars, whatever you could do, I'm sure Don McKay can make some work. He's a reasonable man. Absolutely. You Absolutely. know, what I mean? he's a reasonable man. You want to, you know, you want to get some airtime, something like that. Sean, I see you, man. Hit you with what? Got got Nick's of Hayes. I don't know what you're saying, bro. But I we support. You know what he's saying. I yeah, support. You got Nick's of he Hayes. Like, oh! Oh! <laughs> oh, you a savage. You wasn't supposed to say Look, as Damn. he was reading, he said, "Got Nick." I was like, like "Nick, I, I was like, "I said, is he talking about Patrick? You on the Oh guys? my! But I was like, "No, he." Oh knew my what he was saying. gosh! Listen, RadioOnFire.com. I mean, a lot of prolific people. Baltimore is a prolific place. We're both from up top, uh, New York, New Jersey. We love. It. I've been here ten years. I love this place. I love. I love uh, the fact that I found Don McKay. <laughs> Brother, don't sleep though. It's a problem. And look, you got. They I want to prescribe him something. They say you got to start. I want to prescribe naps. him something. He must take naps in the studio. He, because, I don't think so. <laughs> because when I came down after the Popeyes, look, time out, I came after the Popeyes. Right? I said, I said, hey man, what's going on? Then like he had he his eyes closed. Oh, my bad. Is he, he charging? Yeah, he, he had his eyes closed, and he pointed for like a quick second. Like he had five different. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that too. The bathroom. I saw that too. Next know, like he pointed. I saw that too, and but then, Nikki told you to watch out for the paint. Yeah, she did. After me, I told one, you he, told, he didn't tell me anything. He actually yeah. just pointed. He, he's <laughs> like he he's pointed, fouled. like he pointed at yeah. the door, and I was like, "Yo, I don't know what that door is." I don't yeah, know what it means. you walked in door. it though, and the door actually said it does say wet paint. You could have been getting gang but look, Wow, man, <laughs> see, man, that's so flagrant again. Yeah, I wouldn't so let you. So the door, all the door said was wet paint. So when I came, Nikki said, "No, you don't want to go in there because don't do that, young man." <laughs> you're gonna get paint on your sweatshirt. Yeah, and shout out now your sweatshirt. Yeah, hold on, black pause. Business. Black, black, black. No, 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 no. Before we do that, because your sweatshirt oh, is so. Because I'm a big fan. All right, so the uh, sweatshirt, courtesy uh-huh. the courtesy of Sheep's Clothing Society. That's uh, my brother's. Um, and what's the website? Website sheepsclothingsociety.com. You have to put the. You got to do the, the hyperlink. Like, www. Oh, you ain't got to do that no more. Www. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you say sheep's clothing Yo, society. You be so fucking smart. You're so fucking you dumb. Do <laughs> so dumb. Like, no, you know, www.sheepsclothing. Number, number one, most people would have picked up that it was www. Yeah. They're like me saying, young man EJ is Emilio Stewart Jr. No, yeah, that's like, pretty. Like, I, I, forget no, my own, no. I forget my own fucking name, so that's not hard to say. What do you mean? All right, so anyway, so it's speak, speaking, speaking, of, speaking of hard, we have to work harder to support black businesses. All right, so yeah, we're gonna get Thanks, producer. Answer. There you go. Thank you. Thanks yeah. for keeping us so, on top yes, because yeah. he'll, he'll always <laughs> No, but this, on top this is what we do, and this is natural. And sometimes it, it's better to be this way because I come in here with a plan, with the idea, and it, it goes kind of not to what I wanted to go. You and me is like, I, you know, you know, I don't. Really fuck talking with you, but I love about, you. Wait, wait, is but, this is this an invitation? Like, cause I was no, I was fishing for an invitation no, a little while no, ago. Is no, this an invitation for me to come? Back? No, not at all. Right, so um, let's, let's, black, fact, let's go back to black, black culture. Uh, black on back support. Now you you wrote this down. I did. You mm-hmm. said you, now you and I have talked about this. Yes. There's a problem with the black community and and systemically. I'm, I'm gonna say it's a problem, but there's something. But no, no, no. Wrong. Here's the thing. We're not talking about. Who's responsible for the problem? No, I'm just saying something but there is a problem yeah. with the black community. We're not talking about who's responsible. We're just saying something going We're on. We're saying it's a problem. We're saying something going on. It's two different things. You saying it's the problem. I'm saying something going on. All right. All right. I respect it. There's yeah, one thing I always do. I've learned through the likes of you indirectly, whether you know it or not. I respect the opinion. So there's something going on in the black community. What's going on? So when I wrote this down, it was it was uh, something that hit me. I'm gonna pour up while you take. Oh, give me this dissertation. Let's go. So oh, when wow. I wrote this down, I was thinking about you know how we choose or not to choose. I won't pour up <laughs> our uh, our communities, right? Or our businesses. You know, one thing I I saw and I see. You know, if you put three stores right next to each other, correct. You have a, a black owned store. Mm-hmm. Let's let's say this is a um, convenience store. You put a, a dollar store, a black owned dollar store, white owned dollar store, and a Spanish or uh, Puerto Rican owned dollar store. So Puerto Rican is Puerto black. Rican, it Puerto is Rican. black. Well, it's well, African right, based, but all right. So when you, when you uh, put Irish, those next to each other, so when we go in these stores, mm-hmm. 
And let's say the black owned dollar store products are not one dollar. They're dollar oh six because we added tax to it. You know, we wanted you to pay the tax. We didn't want to pay the tax. You paid the tax. Then you go into the white owned dollar store where they said, you know what, we're gonna take half the tax. We're gonna assume half on you assume her, so they charge you a dollar oh three. And then you go to the Puerto Asian, Ricans or the Asians, Asian, 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 Asian. who's not paying taxes anyway. They charge you that one dollar because they ain't paying taxes for it. So they charge you that one dollar. So everybody's making that same profit margin. But when you go to this black woman store, you're like, oh, y'all overcharging me. Mm. And y'all, y'all actually, y'all got y'all, y'all charging a dollar six when you know, mm -hmm. right over there, they charging one dollar. So okay. in that in that breath of, of, of what you're saying, because I got to keep you on focus and I get what you're saying. In that breath of focus, is it about, at that point, is it about economics or is it about cultural? So I think this, and this is what I think. I think the economics is driving the cultural right now in these businesses. The, the economics is that everyone is trying to make a profit. Mm -hmm. So when you go to any business that you're going to visit, you could go to a business where the uh, Saudi Arabians or Pakistanis are opening these chicken spots. They're not paying taxes and they're also keeping cash. So they're minimizing the amount of taxes that they're paying. That's the economics. Yeah, yeah, that's economics. So then you what about the cultural but, 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 decisions? But, 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 but when you go to the black spot, we're actually, you know, we're trying to live within the means. We're trying to abide by the rules that we that have been set for us. So we're actually starting to pay taxes. So we're saying, in order for me to maximize my profits or get my profits to where yours is, I need to charge this much. So when we go there, instead of looking at it, you're getting ripped off, or, or someone's trying to take advantage of you, we got to start looking at why, why do you have your prices at this and these people have it at that? Well, well y'all get like, if we look at chicken spots, you could go to Roy's, who got, you know, I, I don't know if I'm just naming the Roy's, but you go to Roy's and they're charging you $5.99 for a two piece, and you go to, you know, go to New York, New York Fried, and they charge you $2.99 for chicken. So what are you saying? So I only got two things to think about. Are y'all getting y'all like? Are y'all serving me different chicken? Like, like but, is one of those chickens is, is the chicken better than now the but, chicken? Okay, so let me let me let me interject this point Go ahead. because you're absolutely right about the economics. The economic piece of it, you you can't compare to that because here's the other thing. I'll I'll, I'll insert this location is everything. Like, yeah, oh yeah, location I buy I buy my whiskey down the street. I pay seventeen ninety nine for it, right? For that little bit, but I can go to Total Wine in, in Towson and get a uh, 1.5 liter of Jim Bean for twenty three dollars. But I don't want to drive up there. So excluding all of that, right? Culturally, right? What is making us say outside of the economics? I don't want to buy from Jamaine. I want to buy from Guamel. All right. So my my uh well number one, you would never. And, and the way society is, you will never compare Jamaine and Ramel. You, 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 I made it. I made it. You, you always say Jamaine and <laughs> yeah, I made it. You either say Jamaine and Juan or Jamaine and Jack. You know, because there's two different, you know, cultural biases. Get to biases. the point. Get to the point. So, what you'll say, like, and the reason why, what makes people, you know, about this black on black support is that when we go to, these these black establishment a lot of times we feel like we're being ripped off and not me but per se but people feel like you're ripping me off for that three cent so what you have to do at that point as an owner you got to make the the and like black on black support is the same as i support you you support me if you're a business owner mm -hmm. you know as a black establishment make your customers feel like they're not being ripped off make them feel good but as a supporter you actually have to say I'm going to consciously come to your place True. because guess what? What we used to do, Maxie's had Tuesday night wing special. Mm -hmm. McAvoy's had Tuesday night wing special. Ooh, I would say because, Mac, Mac, well, this is new, but yeah. I get what you're saying. We say we go on to Maxie's because it's black, black home. home. And even when we throw, even when we throw our happy hours and our parties for the fraternity, we always go to black owned spots, even when it's difficult. I get it. But what about when your black owned spots don't deliver? 
So the one thing that we can we we shouldn't say is that, and what we can't say is that if one black owned establishment don't deliver, like I'm, you said, I'm not talking no, about no, all no. of them. I'm talking no, no, about that exactly, one. But I'm saying, but if that one don't deliver, guess what you do? What do you do? Go to the next one. What if? Now here, let me stop you. Now I get that. The problem is systemically in Baltimore City, they make it very difficult for you to get a uh, uh, class B. But we're not talking and about it, that. No, so. I am. We didn't get there yet. But it's a it's a part of the problem. What I'm saying is there aren't there. a lot of places that you can just up and go to in Baltimore so City let me ask you this. that so are black owned. Let, let's get there. Let, let, we didn't get there Let's yet, get there. Let, so no, let's me, get you there. You asked me a question. If a black owned establishment that I go to doesn't you know, meet my expectations, what right. do I do? I go to another black owned establishment. Shouldn't you this, talk to the this, owner? So, so let me say, you should. Just like okay. if you go to a white owned establishment and they don't meet your expectations, what do you do? I I, I bless just like the point in Fells, which is a place that I love to go. Yeah. I blasted them on Facebook, I and know. you know what? The owner contacted me personally. So you saying that, so, it was, so? I'm not saying it's a black or white thing. What I'm saying is, and the same token that we say we need to support black. We as black people have to do better by each other. And guess what? And the thing is, and, and this is to to just say all that, like for all that. Look, if we're gonna say we need to support black and we need to, as black people do better, mm-hmm. we need to all. And this is something that they've been saying: we need to all be treated equally. Yeah. Because look, if if a bad waitress at a white restaurant mm-hmm. gave you terrible service, yeah, you blast her. And then you talk about the restaurant. If a bad waiter or waitress at a black talk establishment, about the restaurant first. you talk about the restaurant first and then talk about the service. I don't, I, don't, I, I, and that's, but, but Jai, I, I, I think I can't, Jai, the thing that we have to be careful with, and, and I'm going to say this and I'm going to move to something else while I respect it. We got to be careful because everybody does things differently. Plus, we're all, everybody in this room right now are literally from a different school of thought. But I get it, and I get the mission. Let me move to something because the timing wise, I don't know where we at. But you're, I want to you get. You got, you I got wanna, twenty-two seconds. I want to get. No, no, no. It was <laughs> look, look, he, look, he starts. Yeah, fifteen minutes. I want to get to checking. your expertise. Oh man, higher education and the impact on HBCUs. Take a second, and I'm gonna let. I'm gonna talk a little bit. I'm gonna talk a little bit, and I'm, I'm gonna let you gather your thoughts because I know, I know how you think, man. You, you're, you're such a thinker. Don't focus on what I'm saying right oh, now. I'm, I'm not, but I know I, you're I such I'm a thinker. But right now, yeah, that's cool. Higher education is impact on HBCUs, and it's wild because I hit you. I hit you. I called my girl. Shout out to Stephanie. Um, oh, God. oh damn! I did do some really Joseph shit just now. I did shout out my girl. And and then there's time nothing out, wrong with out, that. Wait. But my you point actually, is, shut up, shut this. up, shut up. My whole point is that Kendrick Jackson, what's up? Who's who that? Yeah, we, we you'll never know the world. How I many? All right. Well, my point is know. though. Shout out to Stephanie. Cassie, but me had me had go. me had a conversation in the sense that Stephanie was a PWI because they gave her money from Baltimore City. She's from right around the corner. Uh, grew up there her whole life. And my whole thing was, you know, the biggest argument that people that went to predominantly white schools always say, well, I endured racism, so I'm better equipped to deal with white people. Ah, Congratulations. That's bullshit. That's bullshit. (laughs) And I say that and I transition it to you, Dr. Smith. No, no. I'll actually. You're one of the most humble, smart, proclaimed Dumb motherfuckers that I know. Yeah, that was actually cute. Nah, but I actually, yeah, said, you know, when, you. when, you know, it's funny. But tell the know. truth, Shane. So how you feel? Nah, you know, I never, you know, hold my tongue. You know, when you, Pause. um, when you, yeah, damn, that was so flagrant in here tonight. Yeah, nah, but, um, when you actually have, when you have those conversations. Uh huh. And, um, which you ones had, like higher ed? I'm okay. actually about to I'm about to tell you what comes when you had those conversations with people that attended HBCUs and people that attended PWIs. Right. Um, first thing you gotta realize is that when you're going to that conversation, mm-hmm. you know, the respect level is not the same. You know, when when you were What do you mean by the respect level and respect level between two people? Listen, when you were a kid, okay. 
you, your parents always told this you this when I pushed the mic away. They, they, uh, they, when you when you were kids, your parents told you respect others the way that you want to be respected. Right. So when we go into these conversations, me attending all HBCUs, and it wasn't that I attended HBCUs because I had nowhere else to go. I attended HBCUs because that's where I wanted to go. You know, not not uh, oh that was my only choice. No, I had a whole bunch. You did, but but I attended because Rutgers. that's that exactly Rutgers. Princeton, all these schools. I attended. I attended Dell State because that's where I wanted to go. That's where I felt at home. So it wasn't. It wasn't nothing else. So look. So when we when we go in these conversations, you know, people that attend HBCUs, we go in these with a humble mentality and saying, you know what, school is school. A book is a book. Everything that you need, if you if you look at that book, because a book a book at Harvard and a book at a Dell State, if it's the same book. The same author. Guess what? It's the same information. It's the same thing that you got going on. So when we go on these conversations, as people that went to HBCUs, we go say, you know, oh, you went there? Oh, that's great. You know, because we look at it as, oh, you went to college. Oh, you did this. Congratulations. I'm happy for you. They look at it when they come to these conversations, you know, and I've been in a conversation with people all the time. Oh, oh, you went here. I had one, I had one chick, one lady, one girl. One woman, one whatever, because you know whatever you know politically correct thing. I, I was gonna say chick, and not to say anything, but I was gonna say chick. One woman said to me, and this is a girl who went to online school. Nothing against online school, but she went to online school that wasn't even accredited. You know, she went to online school that I wouldn't even send my dog to because it's not accredited. You pay it's a for profit school. But she had the nerve to look at me and say, my parents told me I would never go to HBCU. She was she was black. A black and woman? She was black. And I, wow. And I, looked at, and I said to her, I said, I looked at her, I said, damn. So, you know, I looked at her, I said, well, you know, I said, well, you know, if you know my worst day, I went and went to that school because y'all not even accredited. And she looked at her eyes open up because it was like one thing that you got to understand, accreditation for higher education is accreditation. Harvard Business School, Morgan Business School, Dell State Business School, all got the same accreditation. Yep. The same body that that that, same that the same body in the same institution that say that their their degree is valid yep. is the same one that validates the institutions that's HBCUs. So people don't know that because when, if you look at public perception, it's like, oh, this is that school. Just like John Hopkins. I'll tell you the history of them. Johns Hopkins wasn't Every program there was great. Johns Hopkins actually had a president back in 1906, when a five was founded, back in 1906, who actually was talking to the guy from the Carnegie Foundation. And this is when they started merging the sciences and liberal arts. As in Andrew and Carnegie? That, that's a, yes, and yeah. they, started, they started merging those two because before they separated them, it was one and one. So when, when the president of Hopkins Say, hey man, we can't do, you know, just Carnegie was all liberal. We can't just do liberals. We gotta bring the sciences into this. So Hopkins, you know, they start saying, all right, how we gotta figure this out? So they start working it up. And you start working it out. And they start putting it together. They start piecing it down. They, then next thing you know, they say, well, in order to get Carnegie classification, you gotta excel mm -hmm. in the sciences and the liberal arts. So that's how it started. So that's why Hopkins is actually one of the first schools that actually research. got their Carnegie, they got that research, research doctor, no, doctoral research yeah. classification. Yeah. If you ever look at it, that's why Hopkins is so popular. That's why Hopkins is all around Baltimore. But it's, that's why but it's, it's, it's also a lot of it's like also a lot of deep pockets and a lot of, oh, well, yeah. and, 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 when, and when you, and when you, when you no, talk no, no, no. about equality of education, so, so let, 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 let me quickly no, address it, let me quickly address the the. No, no, no. I let, I, I went to the bad. I let you talk. No, but you said you wanted history. No, no, no. I mean, I'm I'm adding to that when you talk about like when you talk about his. I'm giving it. Right, go ahead. When you talk about historically black colleges across this country, there have been lawsuits after lawsuits. Texas, oh, yeah. Louisiana. Well, I've been on that. I've been on it for years with the state of Maryland. You owe you owe historically black colleges. You know, you duplicated programs. There you, go. Um, you know, it's one thing to say, you know, let's kick it like this. Let's see how much time we got. Let's kick it like this. We don't have that much time, so we so, got to get so other things. After, after you but said real this, quick. I'm going to tell what that, what that lawsuit is, and I'm going to tell. Yeah, real, no, no, no. We don't need to see, The lawsuit is, is clear. 
There's a lawsuit against the state of Maryland for the dish the, oh. from the coalition of something of black colleges, basically a group of people what that are that Morgan know. Well, 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 everything is not. It, it's it's clear what has to be done. There are various remedies of different things. I say go research what the judge ruled. Don't don't speculate. What I'm saying is that um, I'm mean, use an example. The state of Delaware is one flagship. State University in Delaware, mm -hmm. it's Delaware State University. For years, the governor has funded other universities more Wilmington than it has Delaware, Delaware, Wilmington, not even Wilmington, uh, Delaware Tech, University, University of Delaware. Delaware. You, your name goes on. Let's, let's go here. Let's do yeah. this. All right, because you're talking about funding. Speed and it up, this. So I, I'm going to long with it. So I, I am long with it. We, we know. Do. Next time I come, I want a 12 hour show. <laughs> I want. I want to do this. I want a twelve-hour show. That's what I want. Nah, but I had to beg you to come down here tonight. <laughs> nah, but so, so one of the things that EJ was addressing was the uh, the lawsuit that Morgan. No, had, not even Morgan. Know, the no, state of Maryland. Bring, I want to bring it relevant, and okay. I'm gonna tell you. And this is why it's relevant to me because this is how I got here. Morgan actually, Towson University duplicated Morgan's MBA program. And this was a part of that no program duplication within, was it, five miles. You can't do that. But yeah. Towson was winning more money and getting more government funding than Morgan was. Yep. So when Morgan alum went up there and fought, they actually won money that they actually get a certain amount of money each year to bring students in because Towson was actually capitalized on it. And they was using the, the, uh, the program same, curriculum. Same curriculum. The, they actually took Morgan's curriculum. And actually, and use it, that then, to and you're only talking about business. This and, ain't the and, only and that's shit. just business. Look, University of Baltimore, you wasn't you wasn't a four year school. Exactly, it was never intended. You know, MHEC. I mean, this shit runs deep. You know, it, run, it runs real deep. You know what? I'm and coming here every other week. What yeah, it, every it, week it runs deep. We about to have us some. But we about to, we about real to quick, about to I, I wanted to say one thing, and then I, I can I can conclude with this. If Don McKay gives me to wrap up, because we not we didn't get into black relationships. Then we have think to say we'll that go ham. Time. Yeah. That gives me a reason to come back. Fuck you. I really don't care. Damn. But uh Marshall, I went and saw Marshall. Um, Thurgood Marshall, who is a brother of our fraternity. Well, of my fraternity, not in my fraternity. Damn. Um Marshall I just got kicked out. <laughs> who plays at Lincoln in the nineteen something, a uh, native of Baltimore. Um Man, this brother is profound. I mean, the way that the movie, yeah, movies, I, on the one hand, movies don't portray you in accuracy, but the way they portray you is glorified. But but this brother was profound. You know, look at the record. Look at the history books. And and I've, I've heard it's been said a thousand times. I am not my ancestors. I will show you these hands. <laughs> you are not your ancestors, you little fuck. <laughs> your ancestors show more than their hands. They, they sacrifice their lives, their families, and their fucking well-being. Where I understand where you might feel the liberal gall to say you're going to fight somebody, that don't show shit but ignorance. Right up the street, okay, uh, Perry Parkway, Northwood Shopping Center, in the 60s, brothers and sisters got locked up for sitting at a counter that no longer exists. drugstore. They got that at Morgan. Yeah, Sam Brown, one of our frat brothers, did that. They was called nigga the whole night, beaten, locked up, cuffed. You know what I'm saying? This is 50-something years ago. How many motherfuckers right now are ready to do that? Well, I don't know too many people, um, you know, that's willing to do that. And you could right. you know, go, but you could tie this back into the boycott. You know, you got some people that's not willing to boycott. You got some people that's gonna, you know, take everything. Some people that's gonna go. We're not do talking this. about. I don't. I, I don't, I don't this, agree in that point. This. No, but I'll say this. I'll say this, and and I do, you know, share your sentiments that I'm not my ancestors. Um, you'll get these hands. Number one, you're not as resilient. No. As your ancestors. No. You didn't put in the work. No. That your ancestors did because no. you know this generation and I complain about it every day in my job. I say this is a microwave generation. Everything, Everything is instant. Everything it's overnight. Instant. Everything. Now it's not even overnight. It's instant now. Two you seconds. Matter of fact, you give me two minutes. But y'all slow yeah, y'all. Yeah, exactly like they. Y'all yo, slow y'all. No one. You know, look at it right now. <laughs> look at it right now. These people, they, they build the building. 
you know, in one day. But Rome wasn't built in one day. That's why it's still standing. Right. So when you sit there and you look at this generation, uh, you'll catch these hands. What hands are you catching? Because after you get those hands, you're going to die. And the only difference today is that we got social media. It pisses me off. It pisses me off that people have the and I get it to some degree because there are some people there are some people that are there are some people with respect to they, social media they might, popping. They no no there are some people that with respect to generations, they might be the second coming to Angela Davis. Um, you know, they might be the people that, that feel Malcolm flowing through their veins. The reality is your brother and sister that's out here killing each other with the gang wars, with the dope dealing, with the bullshit. You know, our ancestors had to go through way more than this. And when you look at a story like Thurgood Marshall, who people talk about the Brown versus Board of Ed. No, we, we're talking about the brother he defended. And if you haven't seen the movie, you need to see it. It's a must-see. The brother he defended in Connecticut. He couldn't even represent this brother. You know, we are afforded so many luxuries. We're in a studio right now where I say Dama K is, is who he is, and I value him because we have the tech, we have the space, we got Nikki, fuck Dama K, we got Nikki. Yeah, we got Nikki, everybody shout here. Out to Nikki. We got everybody here. But we talk about our ancestors that, that this motherfucker had to call Bridgeport, Connecticut from Mississippi to find out the verdict of a case that the NAACP said, you got to leave this one to go do it. He was the sole lawyer for the NAACP. Now, that was on my agenda to talk about civic yeah, organizations. We, oh, we're we, we going to have you back. But, Thank you. I've you been know, fishing for that invitation for like you. the past four But here's minutes. my thing, man. You know, we had, he was the Thurgood Marshall who pledged at Lincoln University, bloody new chapter, okay? Uh, he ha he was the sole attorney for the NAACP. Now, whether or not you believe the NAACP is doing its job today, which I don't believe it is, that brother did his job. Sacrificed his wife, his family, his livelihood, man. How many people to this day, I mean, like, who are the main people we follow? So this is what I want you to – this is what I want – Um you to leave it at, and, and it's interesting because it's not my show, but I think that's a great <laughs> note to leave it at because, you know, I know you have some more you followers and some more you listeners. Like, leave it at that. Ask that question one more time. So the next time you come to the show. Who do we follow day, today? Who do we follow today? Well, and, and, and like, yeah. Like, like, add something to it. Like, who do we follow today and why? Like, well, who do they stand? Well, here's a, I, I here's a, a, here's a, here's a caveat. Here's a caveat, and I'm, I'm not going to have it in depth, but here's a caveat. We have to be careful who we follow. And even me, and I've always said this as a social worker, as a person by nature and by profession, I'm not a finance person that tells you you're denied your loan. I work with the people that work with the people that work with the people. And so you're I'm, Jerry Jones? No, I'm not Jerry Jones. <laughs> if I was Jerry Jones, I wouldn't know you. Shaw, I don't know you. Straight up. I'd be in Tahiti right now. But my, my, my thing is, man, I work with people and I tell them I'm not perfect. You know what I mean? That's that I think that's the problem with our community. We have the we there used to be a point where you had your Martin Luther Kings, your uh, your Malcolms, you had your Bayard Rustins, you had your uh Paul Robesons, where we could agree to disagree. I think right now we so headstrong with ourselves, you know, I literally listen and look at people's arguments. They are so headstrong on what they believe. They can't listen to anything My else. My last thing that I want to say is that because we have a whole bunch of people that lead mm -hmm. and not enough followers. Right. But you also got to remember that every leader mm -hmm. wants a follower. True. And they have someone they learn from. And that's what we're missing at this point. Because a lot of people mm -hmm. are coming as self-proclaimed leaders. True. It ain't, it, it ain't done nothing. There's people out here that I follow you, on my you, Facebook. Never been a you can't, you can't. It's people that I follow on my apprentice. Facebook that I've been at Dell State and I got there and I and I tribute you guys a lot. No, I don't I really not don't. Me, you know, yeah, not no no not, not so I'm many. Saying, so nah, no, 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 I I, I, I tribute you guys guiding me to the light because if I never found the fraternity, my 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 uh inner selflessness would have never been unlocked. And I tell motherfuckers all the time, like, I've been doing 
these programs since when you was a freshman in high school. And now you got these people that are in their comfortable positions and they do these self-proclaimed, if you don't fuck with my opinion, I don't fuck with you, which is crazy to me. Where are you ever going to get in life if you don't have an open mind? Where are you ever going to get? What are you ever going to do? But, Jamaine, I thank you for coming on. No, I thank you for having me here, man. I I I still don't fuck with you? I had fun tonight. I don't fuck with you. I just want you to know that. But hopefully, I make it get you as a regular. But before we go, uh, shout out to Dr. John A. Smith. Shout out to RadioOnFire.com, home of the Diamond K Morning Show and many others. But Diamond K streams every day, Monday through Sunday, 9 a.m. to whenever he gets off. And I just want to make a point. Um, I am one half of the speakeasy. But the speakeasy plans to interview you, Diamond K. Okay? Mm. We plan to interview you. Cool. You looking real defensive. <laughs> nah. mm. He said cool. Your, your, nah, cool your hairline just sweat. <laughs> a little bit more. <laughs> no, when she laughed, when she, she even laughed. She said, we can't, we can't use Nick. We can't use Nikki. What up, good day? We can't use uh Nikki as a barometer because Nikki is the real killer. See, in the Gambino family, you had the bosses, you had the money men, you had the bullshitters, but you had the killers. Nikki, Nikki is the killer. Yeah, look at her. She's the person that when you come in the studio, I apologize, hey, Nikki, that we, we said we're, your name. We're, we're, we're doing construction. Just go that way. I apologize we that we said your name. I apologize that we said You know, your name. did you get my email? You know, she's the killer. You're a little late today. She's the oh, killer. I'm so sorry. She has her own pink personal chair. She has her own pink everything. She's the killer. We don't listen the to pink shit. Pink assassin. We don't listen to shit Nikki says. Because at the end of the day, you know, she's she's the killer. I don't. I'm, I'm pink sorry. Assassin. The pink assassin. Nikki, the Nikki, pink that's assassin. Your new name. Well, every Nikki, time I come here, you're the pink assassin. assassin. <laughs> I think. Every time I, I think, come here, yo, I think we're making strides here. But oh, just, yeah. just to let you know before we get on air, man, Baltimore Music Awards, Let Your Voice Be Heard. It's the seventh annual joint. Log on to Baltimore Music Awards.com. It's all spelled out Baltimore Music Awards.com before December 3rd. My birthday is. Damn. December. Yeah, but what? I don't remember. Doesn't matter. The uh, six. No. Seven. Yeah, you're right. December 7th. 8th. No, it's the 7th. 9th. No, it's the 7th. My sister's the 11th. The 25th. My sister's the 11th. You was, but born, Baltimore, same, you was born on Christmas. Pearl Harbor Day. Was I was born on Pearl Harbor Day. Uh, Baltimore Music Awards that kind of pose are open, man. Shout out to the Baltimore artists, the local people that are on there. Um, I'm pulling for whoever. I don't know. I know WMSK. Radio, I think, is one of the people, the finalists. I think they are. Yeah, but uh, Diamond K has um, told some of the people that host shows, this doesn't include Jermaine, um, that they will host. <laughs> be presenting an award. Or be presenting an award. So you, December 7th is really your birthday? Yeah, it is. Wow, so it was like, a day that will live in infamy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that I had to think is. about it. <laughs> I'd be forgetting it is my birthday. No, it really is his birthday. Wow. Fact. Yeah. I tried to confuse him. That's why yeah, I threw out yeah, 25 yeah. different dates. I wanted yeah. to confuse him. So, so Diamond K, man, how much time do we three. have before uh, we have the other show seconds. comes in? 20 seconds. How much time? We, we, we got enough time to uh, take y'all pictures. She's going to be right. under the door moment. Oh, I get a picture? Right. So, real quick, what? Um, <laughs> what, is, what is the Baltimore Music Awards going to be about? I mean, no, 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 what's going to be about. Where can we find it? Where can we find it? That's going to be at the Downtown Cultural Arts Center. Downtown Cultural Arts Center. Uh, it's dressed on press. Dressed on press. So don't. It's red carpet. Red carpet. Uh, so people, you know, it's going to be red carpet interviews. It's red carpet be, interviews. Uh, food. It's food. God damn it. I want to know about food. Yeah, it's going to be food. Drinks. It's drinks. You know, you got to have Jim Bean. Live performances. You know you have to have Jim Bean. I don't know Jim if Jim Bean is, is one of the one of the. If that red carpet, Jim he Bean, say, Jim Bean is there. If Henny's there, ass. Jim Bean is there. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, just you it's always. Red carpet, you know, not backyard. And it's it's on now. What day so is it? It's on December fifth. 
So on December 5th. Yeah, so it's Tuesday, December 5th. Oh, Tuesday oh, is my day. Oh, that's his favorite hey. day. What's going to be the world? Tuesday yeah, is so, my day. So, yeah, so people uh, are voting. They'll vote on the winners. Yes. Uh, people are going to announce categories yes. and, and all that kind of stuff. And they're going to open the envelope and yes. find out the winners uh, at the event. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a lot of performances. Big this up, so, man. Good. Big this up. Don McKay yeah. is a dope dude. Dope yeah. show. He Thanks, ain't sir. nothing without... Uh, Nikki the Killer. No, the Pink Assassin. Why you I'm keep sorry. saying the Killer, man? That is, yo, know, you're so disrespectful. The Pink Assassin, Nikki. Thank you. Thank you. Shout out to uh, Jamaine Robert Smith, Doctor Jamaine Robert Smith. Holy crap! I put your whole government out there. And uh, oh, we are one half of the Speakeasy. We'll be back next week. Shout out to my co-host Jennifer Lady Pope. Jennifer Pope. <laughs> <laughs> I had to think about that. And we out of here. He couldn't even remember Peace. his own birthday. Shut up. Beep. <laughs>